a while back I made a video on the electric fence um, on the, the canyon that we got into. What I didn't show you guys was that the bear got in. What I didn't show you guys was that the bear got in and he tore up everything. And I feel that it was just probably a cub because if it was an adult bear, he likely would have done a lot more damage. And the reason I say he would have done damage was because once that bear got into the yard, he could have easily just gone to town, but he didn't. This whole line was down. All this was everywhere. Had a couple hives here and there that were just knocked over. There was one over there that I had to relocate. It got drenched, just super soaked. So I moved it from there um, to that location right over here. I believe this one's it. And I will show you guys here in a little bit. But, but I came back and I added an extra ground. And the reason why I added an extra ground was to hopefully just run more juice, get a better ground on the fence to just get some more juice flowing through that uh, fence. Let me show you this ground really quick. I switched things up from the last time, the last setup. Ended up going with a four foot rod rebar. In the last video I showed you guys that we can go with rebar. It's a cheaper alternative than getting that ground at your feed store, um, your home improvement store, wherever it is that you get your electric fences. Um, the, the ground pools, they can be expensive, especially if you go for those copper ones. And one rod, this is original rod. And then I ended up going with another one. So I ended up locking it in right so, and I didn't use a clamp. It just was being a pain in the butt. Wrapped it around here, ran it to here, wrapped it a couple times. And what we did do was we went with an aluminum wire and I went with aluminum rather than the threaded um, electric fence. Only reason why is because I was just doing a little reading and research that there is higher ohms flowing through the aluminum. That's why we went that route. Added our um, electric uh, charger onto that T-post. I needed it off the ground. When the bear came, got tangled in this whole mess. It was just a mess, goodness. I wish I would've uh, had my GoPro at the time because I would've showed you guys. Everything was everywhere. Luckily, no hives got you know messed up. We did have a storm. It Some of these two hives got drenched. One was so strong, no big deal. Another one was pretty, just, a little iffy but I believe that it made it we'll take a look so t-post aluminum wire wrapped it went up wrapped it to the other one and I'm show you real quick where he where that a little poo bear came through So this is where I feel he came through. Right through there. 
as I was walking through here, I just wanted to get an idea if he had took any of my hives down this way. I had a hole on one of the pallets that I forgot was a hole. And I was like, shoot, this stinking bear just took my hive and probably went down here somewhere and had some fun. But you can see where, where he was rolling around. Right in there, and right over there. The grass is all knocked down. Right in there, and right there. All this, all this is all disturbed grass that was not like this. So I know that bear got the business by my bees. So that was great <laughs> that the bees held down their fort. <laughs> Hopefully that bear doesn't come back. If he comes back, tell you what, gonna get it, boy. But he did leave me a little present. Left me a big old turd nugget. Let's go uh, show you this bear poop. There you go. So I know he's around, don't know much about bears, did a little research and asked a couple fellow beekeepers from California, but for now, those are the improvements that we made on our electric fence. Nice beautiful day here. Alright guys, we had to put on our bee suit. <laughs> Uh, the sun peeped out and bees got a little active, so couldn't do it without a good old veil. But I want to show you the stronger colony that um, it kind of survived that those thunderstorms, man. It was wild. I don't need to pull frames out. I don't want to get them all upset. But it's pretty strong. The other one that I wanted to show you is the one that I'm really worried about. And it wasn't very strong, it was just getting it. I had to put a cell in it not too long ago. Went on the mating flight and she started to lay. Um, so that's the one that I was iffy on. Is it gonna make it? Did the brood get wet? Did the larva get soaked? I mean, it was drenched. Let's go take a look at it really quick. Okay, so what I did do with this hive is that I relocated it from its original spot to a spot where it had a, um, there used to be a booming single right here. I wanted it to catch more drift. I was worried that the um, amount of bees weren't wasn't going to cover the brood, keep it warm in order for it to survive. So there is a chance that the queen could get mauled by the bees coming, you know, any drift that's coming into this hive now. Uh, there is a chance of that happening, uh, but there's also a chance that they just take her and uh, they just go about their business. Let's take a look, huh? So, I mean, you can see right away, it's not as booming as that other one. This cluster's pretty small. Here's that old cell cup I was talking about. Let's take a peek. See if these girls are gonna be all right. Always likes to pull out a frame from the outside. Gives me some, uh, a little play. So this was a brood that I was talking about that I wanted to 
have kept warm. So it looks like there's a better coverage now on Mount of Bees. Let's see if we can find this queen though. So I could always look for eggs. The problem with looking for eggs right now, it does me no good because I just swapped this box out the other day and there's still gonna be, you know, signs of eggs probably. Um, take a closer look. Well, it's looking really good. Pretty pleased. Glad it worked out. I could always plop in a new queen if uh really would like to, to find her. Oh, I think I saw her. Where did she go? Where did she go? You guys see her? No, oh, I just saw her. Oh, there she is. Look at that. Bees are looking good. Eating good. They love that mustard. There's a lot of stuff growing out here. Got some vetch. Some little random clover. These little purple flowers. Some more mustard. Up in the canyon, on those ridges, you can see some some other type of purple flower, but what I'm excited for is this plant right here. Good old California star thistle. That is some of my favorite honey. Dark honey, but it, it's delicious. Delicious on a peanut butter sandwich, pancakes, waffles, great stuff. Not on coffee though. Can't beat some sweet white clover and some coffee or tea. That's it on our improvements for our bear fence. Um, again, thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please go down below, hit that subscribe button and give us a big thumbs up. And please share this video. If you know a beekeeper, if you know somebody interested in how to set up your fences, share that link for our bear fence and our improvements. All right, thanks a lot, guys.